you're probably thinking to yourself that yes, Hello World will compile on the M1 Max. And you are absolutely correct. But mercy sakes, have you seen how slow it compiles when your code is not natively supported? Hey guys, welcome back to DevTech. My name is Bob. I'm a full stack engineer. I build mobile apps and backend services. Today we're gonna take a look at Apple's dynamic binary translator, AKA Rosetta 2, to see just how much it impacts your development workflow. Man, that was the coolest sentence I've said in a while. Dynamic binary translator. Now we all know that Rosetta 2 is not a long-term solution. It's a stopgap until all architectures, all software development kits, everything is ported over and supported natively on ARM64. Coming from the Intel Macs, many programs and development frameworks were compiled against x64. That was Intel's base architecture type for the i5, i7, and i9 MacBook Pros. So if your development environment is not natively supported by these M1s, Rosetta 2 will kick in and convert your x64 instructions to ARM64 instructions. Why should you care though? Well, if you're considering switching to an M1 Mac, then it's really good to check if your development environment works natively on this new architecture type to ensure that you're actually getting the speed benefit of switching. But first, a project update. I'm in the process of tearing down this 60 year old garage and rebuilding it myself. It is so cold out here. 40 degrees. I cannot wait to insulate this space. If you wanna know more about this project and how I'm going to convert this into an ultimate programming and general engineering workspace, make sure that you subscribe and check out the link above. Lastly, we have a giveaway today, so be sure to keep watching in order to find out more details. Okay, so software fundamentally works in layers, right? We all know this. But Rosetta, of course, adds a whole nother layer to the onion. So of course, when we compile things, if we're running through Rosetta, things are gonna be slower. When I switched to this fully specced M1 Max about a month ago, I noticed that my unit tests and applications were actually running slower than on my i9 2019 MacBook Pro. I honestly felt like I had made a terrible purchase buyer's remorse set in and definitely knocked me down a notch. Notch joke. I quickly noticed that Kotlin, the programming language I was using at the time, was not natively supported by the JVM I was running at the time. My JVM needed to be native to ARM64. So here are the questions I started to ask myself. How much slower is Rosetta 2 versus native when compiling. How does Rosetta compare to the Intel i9? Before we start answering, let's see how easy it is to set up a JVM on the new M1. First off, and this is optional, if you do get a Mac, make sure you install Alfred. Alfred is a Mac OS spotlight replacement. It adds a lot of enhancements and customizations, extensions, anything you can possibly think of to Spotlight, which is really nice. So right now I can just open Terminal. Or I can do something even more advanced, like set up a workflow that starts a VPN for me. It's just another way for me to avoid using my mouse and doing everything from my keyboard. All in the name of efficiency. Another one I created, Check Yourself. It launches Photo Booth before a Zoom call so that I can see what everyone else is going to see before I actually go live. The second thing you may wanna consider installing is Oh My ZSH. It is a great theming and extension management utility for your terminal. So you can see here, there's a lot of color coding and really nice effects that are going to happen as a result of switching to this. I also get nice um, auto-completes, the abilities to select things. These are just things that will not work out of the box with the default terminal. And the third thing I recommend installing is SDK Man. It is a 
package manager tool that lets you install and switch to different versions of JVMs. It also manages other packages as well, but today we're going to set it up for managing JVMs. I highly recommend using a package manager like this to manage your JVMs because managing them manually adds a lot of overhead that will complicate your development workflow. So in order to configure oh my ZSH, you're gonna go to your user profile. So here you can see I'm in users forward slash Bob. I'm going to open VI for ZSHRC. Control F to kind of scroll down a little bit and you can see here that I've got home directory mapped to SDK man's initialization file. This is also where you would add changes to your themes, other paths like for Flutter, Android, Homebrew, anything like that. So let's see what JDKs I can install. I'm gonna type SDK list Java. And that's gonna give me a list of all the JDKs I can install using this package manager. Ah, but this is a catch. There's a catch here. A lot of these are not ARM64 compatible. So a quick thing you can do in order to make this list show you ARM64 compatible items is change your SDK man config. So I'm gonna go in and type VI, go to SDK man ETC config. I'm gonna go down to this specific flag that is, it's a temporary flag called SDK man Rosetta 2 compatible and I'm going to change it to false. All right, now I restart my terminal and I'm going to type the same thing again, SDK. That's another thing I really like about oh my ZSH is that it remembers all of my previous history. So if I start typing something like SDK and I hit the up arrow, hit enter, and there you go. It's a much shorter list of native JDKs. As you can see here, I already have JDK 11 from Zulu installed. The thing that you wanna take note of is the name in this far right column. So in order to install one of those packages, you just say SDK install Java, and you either say Zulu or whatever one of the ones in that far right column that you decided to choose. Now I already have this installed, so I don't need to install it again. I'm just gonna check to see which one I'm actually running on real quick. And you can see here that I'm running Zulu. Okay, so I'm gonna switch to a non-native JDK. So the nice thing about having a package manager is actually switching between different packages. So I'm going to switch, and the command for that is use, to the non-native JDK that I have installed, adopt JDK. All right, so I wrote a Kotlin program that compiles a Kotlin Hello World program, runs it many sequences, and averages the total time. So let's compile this program and run it on this non-native JDK we just switched to. This is going to allow us to see how long Hello World takes to compile after many sequences. We're just going to switch to the directory that has it and go into the source folder. And you will see here that I will Kotlin C timer.kt include runtime dash D timer.jar. Okay, so now that it's done compiling, we're gonna go ahead and run it. Java dash jar timer.jar. And it'll sit here for quite a while while it runs. Okay, wow, that took quite a while. All right, so it averaged 9.85 seconds to compile Hello World 20 times on a non-native JDK. So on a non-native JDK, a Kotlin Hello World program will take about 10 seconds to compile. All right, so let's switch to a native JDK and see what happens. SDK, use Java, Zulu. Now let's go through, compile the timer function again, run the program. All right, so on a native JDK, a simple Kotlin Hello World program compiles in about three seconds. So when you're using a non-native development environment, you can see that Rosetta 2 really will slow you down. All right, so let's see how long this takes on an Intel-based Mac. 
Okay, so we're on the Intel i9. This is a 2019 fully spec model. And we're going to go ahead and compile the timer. And let's go ahead and run it. So our final results are in. In third place is the M1 Max when running Rosetta 2. This means when you are doing any type of development through the Rosetta 2 layer, you can expect to get worse performance than the Intel-based Mac. In second place is the Intel-based Mac. It actually finished in half the time at five seconds. And in first place is the M1 Max when running a JDK that is native to the machine. So what does this mean? If you're considering moving over to the M1 series for development, even simple development, don't count on any speed improvements if you are going to rely on Rosetta 2. Sure, it's a great stopgap in the interim period, but it will definitely cause your workflow to be slower. And this is our last call for our next giveaway. Make sure you follow me on Twitter and Instagram because that's where we're going to announce it. Last week, we gave away a $160 DOS keyboard for professional. I love and drive DOS keyboards every single day. They are not a sponsor to this channel. I just truly believe in the product. And like I said last time, every dollar this channel makes comes back to you in the form of a giveaway. So make sure that you like and subscribe for future updates. Thanks for watching guys. I hope this video was super helpful. If it was, please leave a comment or let me know what I can do better in my future videos. Thanks for watching guys. Until next time.